சனிக்கிழமை மாலைதோறும் நடைபெறும் சத்சங் சொற்பொழிவு தொடருக்கு அன்பர்கள் அனைவரையும் வரவேற்கின்றோம் இன்று நம்மிடையே பேச இணைந்துள்ளவர் மேடம் சுஜாதா பத்தி அவர்கள் அவர்கள் நமக்கு நன்கு அறிமுகமானவர் இன் ஏர்லியர் அகேஷன்ஸ் ஷி ஹட் பார்ட்டிசிபேட்டட் இன் அவர் சட்சங் அண்ட் கேவ் மெனி டைம்ஸ் கேவ் சிஸ்போக் ஆன் செவரல் டாபிக்ஸ் ஸ்பீஸ் ரன்னிங் அண்ட் ஆஷ்ரம் சென்டர் Yorbindo and Mother Center in a very remote place called Brahman Shuku that is in that is in Orissa there uh, she has uh, her entire family is involved in that work uh, they have almost transformed the lives of the people local people mostly they are tribals she has been conducting house to house study circles that is what they call patha chakras by which the teachings of shri arbindo and the mother is being spread to the villagers because of that the attitude of the villagers have changed today she is going to talk about dealing with materials used in work i welcome sujatha madam and she is an uh, she is a student of shri arbindo ashram school she studied there and she met the mother also i welcome sujatha pati and uh, you please hand over the floor, hand over this forum i hand over this forum to you please take charge and i, re- I request you to uh, give a talk thank you நமஸ்காரம் i am really grateful to the mother to be among you and sharing with you some of the words of the mother and shri arvind as we have taken the topic today for today's program session dealing with materials used in work because most of the time we actually we neglect this thing but how important is this we must know as we know shri arvindo's yoga is the yoga of transformation so transformation of the mind transformation of the vital as well the transformation of the physical or body into the divine principle in other spiritual disciplines you know they ignore the body and concentrated solely on brahman so their aim was to liberate themselves liberate from this earthly bondage and get united with the source and those who even care for the for their body their aim was not for a transformation their aim was just to carry on to keep a healthy body and carry on with their spiritual practices but the aim was not transformation this we should remember because so many asked many people ask why 
they were also doing the thing they were also doing the spiritual practices so why do, when why were not they transformed so because their aim was not that and the time hasn't hadn't come for that so now in the process of evolution the time has come that man will be now in the process of evolution the time has come because the man will be united with the divine with the divine and will be united with the source and the divine will take the position of the being and transform the being into the divine into a divine being so man is not a fun not the final it is a transitional man is a transitional being which shrinda has said so to accelerate this process so to accelerate this process process of transformation shri ravindan mother brought down the supramental force on the earth now along with the mental or uh, mind vital the body also must be prepared for this process of transformation now what is the best thing the body can do to prepare itself for transformation first as we pray in our mind and pray within our heart similarly the body too must learn to pray so how will the body pray mother says to work for the divine is to pray with the body when mother was asked for a message to put on the walls of the room of the ashram press we must be knowing and she gave one and she said that they, why they asked this they said mother you give us a message so that we can take it as a motto of our work so mother said let us work as we pray for indeed work is the body's best prayer to the divine so shri ravindra was asked if transformation is possible without work shri ravindra said no transformation is not possible without working for the mother uh, just a minute please uh, excuse me one minute i'll need sorry for the interruption hmm. so mother said to so, 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 ravind said hmm. said without work there can, without mother's work there can be no transformation so now we can understand the importance of work in this yoga so now let us just go back a little and define work what is work so we generally understand that doing something to earn money or achieve something materially that is work but in true essence in true sense each each action done by the body in true sense each action done by the body or mind can be uh is anyone saying something so each action done by body or mind can be considered as work so if we see action starts from the womb of our mother itself when you start moving so man or animal or any creature once born means 
they are bounded with work. It may be crawling, walking, flying, eating, sleeping, everything is a part of work, even breathing. So we see work, but as we are all bound to work, similarly, most of the work we do is bound with the material things. As for walking, we need a footwear or any way or a base to walk on. And for eating, we need food and utensils. For sleeping, we use mattress. For writing, pens or pencils, anything. Even for before the feathers were used for writing. So more or less, for every work, we are associated with some or other material things. In every field, be a house or a factory or any other department, we have to deal with the materials according to the need. But do we ever give a thought how these materials or things are helping us? Have we ever shown our gratitude to the or gratefulness to them in feelings as well in dealing with them while dealing? So have we given any importance? Have we given the shown a gratefulness to them? But when they get out of order or they are damaged or we do, do not have them when we really need them. So that time only we feel their absence or their deficiency. But if we take proper care of the things, keep in the right place and right way, they will last for a longer period. So we need to take proper care of the things, but not just because they serve us, but also because they too carry the divine presence in them. So mother said, the divine is in things, things also. That's why they must be treated with care. Now, another point. Things are also associated with wealth power. How? So, Sri has said, actually, when we waste too much of things, it may be food or any material thing, we just get it. And, uh, but uh, do not make proper use of it and dump it and or just throw it away carelessly, spoiling the things in a short time, lose the things due to our carelessness or misuse the service. Example, we can take mobile. It's given to us for a better use, to make best use of it for, we can make it, make best use of it for our spiritual progress also. But we know how it is mostly misused. So things are misused <coughs> of their service. So Sri Aurobindo says, either due to vital grasping or, or to tamasic inertia, they are misused, they are do, done in this way. So he says all these attitudes which we discussed are baneful or destructive to prosperity or tend to drive away or discourage the wealth power. So Sri Aurobindo says it is so rampant or it is so, means, you know, it's, uh, it, is, it has been spreaded throughout the society so much in the society that if it continues in this way, the coming of wealth will proportionately increase the wastage and disorder and this will neutralize the material advantage. So for the material progress, this should be remedied. So in Sri Aurobindo's word, this must be remedied if there is to be any sound progress, any sound progress. So if we want the material progress, we have to get rid of these practices. To waste the things, to careless handle the things, and to throw away when it is most needed. And all these things we have to practice, actually, to get rid of this, these attitudes. In India, we know, we consider Maha, Mahalakshmi as goddess of wealth. In our childhood, if we, we must, I think it, it has been 
we all must have experienced this in our childhood when we waste something we waste food or anything we break misuse anything our elders used to say if you waste in this way mahalakshmi will be severe to you and you won't get anything in future so now we can see how material things play such important role in material life so material things are not to be disliked or despised because without them there can be no manifestation in the material world as the, as we know there is a line in savitri this earthly life becomes the life divine and matter shall reveal the spirit's face so the divine is present in matter and it will manifest itself through the material things so without the material things this manifestation is not possible in the in this material world so we must be very careful not to disrespect the material thing <clears throat> i can give some examples you know how mother used to have respect for the material things once mother uh, mother had a handkerchief which was a little torn or something some uh, marks had been there so datta or uh, sadhika who was taking care of those things she, she said mother why can you know can we discard this handkerchief mother almost snatched it away from her hand and said do you know how much she has uh, this handkerchief has served me so when i had i heard this and i was thinking okay if you go on keeping these things how will we manage the things what did mother should do with the, the handkerchief then then i was just thinking then i once when i went to a story of buddha so the idea was clear to me i i would like to narrate the incident of buddha once a once a disciple of buddha asked buddha dev for a bed sheet buddha dev can you, sir can you please give me a bed new bed sheet so buddha asked what did you do with the old one so he said it was torn so i cut it into two pieces and i'm using it as door screen door and window screen buddha asked then what happened to the old cut and old screen then disciple said it was faded so i used it as table cloth so what about your old table cloth so the disciple said it was torn and i cut it into pieces and used it as handkerchief as handkerchiefs then what happened to your handkerchief old handkerchiefs so he replied again the disciple i cut it into small small pieces and used it in lamps and diyas diyas you must be knowing for burning which you are using sir you are using it in your evening puja so we can see how there are so many ways of utilizing the materials they become happy these materials these things they become happy when they are used why because they to have a consciousness they should be taken so because they have to have a consciousness they should be taken proper care it can be done this care can be done in two ways two aspects are same one is proper use of the thing and second the harmony between them what do you understand by harmony harmony is mother said to be in place in proper place that means we should know where to keep and how to keep the proper way to keep so that they will have their own identity and along with that it will express the beauty and sanctity of the place so if let's see if we enter a drawing room okay and see that clothes are hanging here and there and, and uh, chairs and tables are not properly arranged and so on and how will we feel do you feel happy seeing this scenario so the place of clothes are in the wardrobes or any destined place for them similarly the chairs the teapots have their own place in the drawing room properly arranged now we say we say that our hair is the beauty of our face okay the hair adds the beauty in our appearance so but 
if we have hair all over our body will you look more beautiful so so everything in the right place is harmony among the things you know how god has created us eyes in their place nose in their place we see a good nose is good when one has a good nose if she looks sure he looks beautiful or handsome if we have more noses in our face will you look more beautiful or handsome so similarly we have each thing has its own place so everything in the right place is harmony among things so shri arvind has explained in maharaj sutis aspect in the mother's book so how harmony as ma sorry mahalakshmi aspect in detail about the harmony as mahalakshmi's demand of us so when we arrange everything properly in the right place the things respond to it and that response unknowingly makes us happy so because they to have a consciousness they feel and respond to care similarly they are sensitive to careless careless touch and rough handling so we all must have some or other experience of course i think take an example if we are taking proper care of our vehicle it can be a cycle or or a scooty or a bike or a car anything so if you are taking a good care of it and have it and we are maintaining it properly having a respect for it giving a proper maintenance we'll see in time of some danger or accident to we'll see that it will take such a miraculous turn or a movement and save you from the accident similarly if you do not take proper care or misuse they will break down at just at the right moment when we need them most so they also respond to our feelings if we have a positive feeling they give us more service if we have a denial sort of feeling they go into strike so we can just once uh, i can take a, an example once uh, a refrigerator was old and uh, but uh, was running good running well we just discussed that we should sell it and get a new one the same day it went into strike so another sweet incident of mother and we all know how she used to be identified with the vegetables and uh, cherry trees and all these things and now we'll see how she was um, how she had an incident with a flower mother said once she was uh, ar- while arranging the flowers for distribution among the sadhaks she was keeping the good ones on one side but again she noticed that another one flower is uh, was a uh, more bloomed you know more open so she said ah it has opened so much it doesn't look nice anymore isn't it will it be nice enough to be given and she thought this much mother she thought this much what happened mother was holding that rose you know that stem of the rose loosely just under her very eyes that stem you know that rose it turned around and stuck its th- thorn into mother's finger so <laughs> mother said i have i have noticed jealousy among the flowers some roses if you put other flowers with them they just wither instantly but it's the first time i have seen anger so mother gave away the rose and which she had that rose really wanted so what she it has wanted mother had mother distributed that rose to and another example so once uh, mother called a sadhak and asked acha do you keep water the whole night in your bucket in the bathroom the sadhak said yes mother mother said please don't do it hmm. that bucket too is feeling bad with it and she it won't serve you more if you keep it in this way it will have holes in it and it will it cannot serve you the more 
it was intended to be said to serve. So the Sadiq said, okay, but then the sub, but mother, how did you know that I kept the water in the bucket overnight? Mother said, the bucket, last night, the bucket itself came and complained about you. That mother, see how she has, how this Sadiq has kept me. So how can I serve him more? So this is how, you know, the things have consciousness. So Sri Aurobindo has said, when the supramental force comes on the earth, there will be a response everywhere. This is how the things are responding. Now, another point. Let's see how can we take proper care of the things, especially when we are on the spiritual path. So Sri Aurobindo said the rough handling and careless breaking or waste and misuse of physical thing is a denial of the yogic consciousness and a great hindrance to the bringing down of the divine truth to the material plane. Just see how she has said, but we just, we ignore these things. So we have to, the rough, what is said about the rough handling and careless breaking or waste and misuse of physical things is a denial of the yogic consciousness. So, until man is conscious, some fixed rules have to be met. How? Just example. We can take some examples. In some countries, you'll see, you'll find roads and cities absolutely clean. If anyone who throws anything on the road or spit there, immediately they are charged fine of, for a, of a long sum. So in museum also, there are rules and things are kept in glass boxes so that no one can hold it or misuse it or mishandle it, no? So man is sufficiently developed. So until man is sufficiently developed to deal with them in the right way, some fixed rules or program has to be made for dealing with them. Now, mother was asked, so why, why do we lose things? So first thing, to deal with them carefully, first thing we have to make some rules and fixed programs. Now, secondly, my, she was asked, why do we lose things? Mother said, you are not sufficiently conscious while keeping the things. So now, we have to be more conscious. When we keep the things, we'll get it in the right. You know, if we keep the things consciously, we'll see even at night, in the dark room also, you can find it just using your hand where the thing is. But if we put it conscious, unconsciously, even in the day, broad daylight also, we won't be able to find it. We'll be thinking, where, where have I kept, where have I kept? So we have to be very conscious while keeping the things. So now, while handling a thing, our hand should be sufficiently conscious. So mother said, to make hand fully conscious. People, the children asked, mother, how can you keep our, make our hand conscious? He said, when you do a work, your whole concentration will be focused on your hand and we have to train our hands for that. So when a sadhana, when a sadhika, we all must have heard her name. Her name was Hutta. So mother had herself taught her painting. But before teaching, once mother told her to arrange her cupboard, you know, her cupboard was filled with, uh, was just filled with all sorts of delicate and brittle material, you know, matter of things which were presented to her from all sides, from all uh, different uh, sadhaks and uh, also um, the followers. So, Uta was now nervous when she saw these things. She said, what will I do if it breaks, if it falls down from my hand? So, a little carelessness also can bring catastrophe, <laughs> so she thought. So she wondered what to do. And very carefully, attentively, she just started her work, giving her full concentration on the work. It took few days to complete, 
and mother was so happy and said now she was ready to start for the painting to learn painting so mother's intention was to prepare her hand to make her hand conscious before starting the paint starting to paint so mother said when she when mother played piano her hands were fully conscious and receptive it did not have any relation with the body consciousness her hands her hands were themselves her means uh, themselves conscious so her consciousness descended into her hands so while and we'll see we can see you know what happens when while uh, we can mark while pouring oil or water into a bottle you know when we are if we are fully conscious it goes down smoothly but as soon as soon as we think ah oh, i'm doing a good job so it's going on smoothly immediately the hands shake you know and our all attention get diverted so mother said if we do not practice to make our hand conscious we won't be able to do anything good so we must learn to train our hands in the mother book in mahasaraswati aspect shri ravindu has written about the conscious hand and while explaining this about this conscious hand to children mother said whatever we do before doing our all consciousness should be concentrated on the cells of our hands even the every cells of our hands or fingers in each cells should be concentrated so we need to practice this whatever we are doing while handling a thing after the use what we do usually we might we we used it and kept it wherever means so uh, where, where where we are using we just keep it there sometimes but we have to keep it in that again proper place so that when we need it again we can get it and may it be a small thing as a needle with a oh it was just a needle or a safety pin or a just a comb or anything a small thing so what is there if we get lost we can buy it again no mother said it may be a small thing as a needle or a big thing as a machine or any tool and also that should be taken proper care and that should be placed properly in a proper way so again mother said you have no right to use any material object whatsoever if you do not take care of it just say we have no right to use any material object if we do not take care of it so when mother herself her was living in france paris to her or whatever things she was using she just prayed for them so that these things should go to the proper hand and should be properly used and she showed her gratefulness to those things so we discussed so many things about the material things there are many other things many other examples we have but due to time we discussed uh, whatever we can could but now the main important part of it is what about our body which is constituted of pancha tattva and our ultimate aim is the physical transformation into divine tattva so we have to prepare our body for the same so mother has given so much importance you no know, to diet to rest work and regular exercises you know in my, in uh, pondicherry shri aurobindo ashram we have holidays for school but not for physical education physical exercises so on sunday we have held holiday we have no school for studies but for exercise for group we have to attend every day even in vacation 
and before starting and after our exercise we must concentrate on the mother's force before starting we must concentrate on the mother's force then that force will take care of our body and we must concentrate on her and after that we must surrender whatever we have done to her and now that when we are doing yoga yoga means we united with the force so we must get united we say just to exercise we are saying almost the in general way of speaking is to the exercise we are saying we are doing yoga but actually what is yoga yoga means we united with our source so even when we are doing exercise the part which is being uh, you know focused that should be in that part we must concentrate the mother's force we must call down the mother's force while doing exercise so that then then only the cells also will be ready and mother's force will work on the on the cells and they will be ready and to manifest the divine in the physical so we saw all these things we have to uh, be so careful in dealing with these things i think it's uh, 440 but uh, whatever any if any questions regarding this we can just share we can discuss on them any questions uh, are there any thing you wanted uh, participants want to discuss do you please uh, raise your hand and uh, i can just speak a few lines uh, most uh, when we spoke of mother's work so many ask what is mother's work how can you define mother's work we speak of mother's work we should do mother's work and shrivinder has also said about it what is mother's work so uh, i think i i can put this question now after that we'll uh, again discuss on that Vijay Narayanan, something you wanted to ask? Yeah, we, I remember to have read that in our mother's uh, rather, uh, her uh, life, she was invited to an office to open the or to bless the office uh, premises. So she she was on her way, and suddenly, because of change in program, she was arriving uh, earlier to the time. she has been rather uh, informed uh, the uh, the uh, office people immediately rush to uh, rather make the office clean by putting everything in one cupboard and lock it and then when mother arrived she was telling uh, something uh, unusual is here and uh, it is not in order uh have you put uh, all the things in one cupboard or something like that then when they opened it they saw the papers everything is not arranged properly then she told that it has to be it is something related to what today we heard from our uh, uh, rather uh, uh, sujatha ji i just wanted to just uh, uh, reflect on this particular incident mother bless us Yes, thank you so much for sharing. Yes, when uh, when the people also asked why the uh, the incident brother narrated, and uh, about that incident only I'm speaking. When the, they asked mother, how did you know that these things are? They just when they came to know that mother is arriving, they suddenly just pushed up all the materials into one cupboard or something in a, in a place, and when mother K arrived, she just went straight to that cupboard and opened that cupboard. and she saw all the things when miss and uh, they all asked well, how did you know mother how did you go straight to that that cupboard at the things they asked they told me mother see how we are here so they only called me there so these things have consciousness they have their relation with the mother they used to speak to the mother mother used to know them
any other incident anyone who would like to share or <clears throat> ask anything yes sir i am care sir uh, thank you see we have uh, heard many instances of mother's extreme care on the smallest things which we use every day in her room there were many scissors many pairs of scissors each one was dedicated for a particular purpose and use to open a postal envelope or a cloth lined envelope the same scissor was not used there is a different scissor for a cloth lined envelope and she used to say to parisham who was uh, looking after the garden work that he should not hand over the garden tools to any worker or anybody else because they will not use it properly whether it is a special rose cutter or a weed remover or a digger anything it has to be kept in a proper way and because she said they to have consciousness when mother was asked how does grace work mother how does grace work she said you cannot uh, describe it in words or in fabulous grace has its own laws like that even a smallest thing like uh, madam sujatha pati mentioned about a hanky a hanky was probably a little torn in one edge or or some thread has come out so she would allow data to change the hanky she almost hugged the hanky to prevent her from sorry, carrying out her intention so madam pati she has chosen a very good and interesting topic in yoga like even the achetana things which we use in our daily life have a consciousness and we must respect them we also have experience in our own garden and we water with a lot of love the plant flourishes well and the flower blooms well they feel happy they could sense that happiness when we report a particular plant which needed reporting the plant expresses its gratefulness by they are happy when we go near them we could sense its happiness so she has chosen a very good topic to today and uh, we are very grateful to her thank you madam thank you very much thank you brother yes radha rani madam a uh, good evening madam thank you sujatha madam always your talk is very nice and this topic so beautiful how the body will pray by work in one sentence you have given so many things about uh, mother's teaching it's many uh, it's thought provoking and uh, we should care for the material things not that they are serving us they are conscious they too can understand us but this in my life i have uh, after coming to mother i have understood many times those things really have conscious and they help even though they are about to break or whatever they work and then complete their service that i observed in them and even my children i tell them even if you bang the door or not to keep the shears properly you have to say sorry and then do it proper again so that uh, the material things are respected and uh, they are serving us very beautifully said madam and hand consciousness was a new thing to me i thought consciousness only it is in the mind but now when you said hand consciousness and you said it in a very interesting way with example it was very useful and uh, about the body you said exercise uh, concentrate on the force before and then surrender it later 
this is also a very new point to me i take mother while going for my walk or whatever but this way i was not doing it i'll do it in uh, future thank you so much it was very helpful to me madam yes when uh, thank you when she said about the banging the door i just remember another incident when uh, sadhak used to open the door by kicking it just you know like uh, just kick the door and open it and after some time it, you know he got some pain or something in his uh, on the leg and it was it could not be treated he went and showed the doctors that could doctors also could not treat, uh, you know have the know what happened actually so he wrote to sri ravindu about it sri ravindu said it is obvious that when you kick at the door the door will kick at you so <laughs> the thing is when we misuse the thing then the same response will be come will be coming from those things also thank you ma'am thank you any other uh madam something you said about mother's work and then you just stopped i hope yes, you'll be sir. saying something yes i was just uh, i was putting thank a question I, i thought of discussing then i thought i can put this question if anyone can give their opinion then we can we can go for discussion that i was asking what do we mean actually by mother's work when shrimdha said should work for the mother what is that mother's work we say we can say that in ashram they are whatever they are doing its mother's work but what do we generally mean by mother's work if we say to mother's work what do we understand by that we can give just we can share our opinions mother's work uh, to do the work completely consciously and without harming anyone and surrendering the work to her and uh, remember that we are doing the work through her power i feel like that man if that can uh, be done in at every moment of course that will give us some force and mothers uh, we can say in uh, some way that it's mother's work but actually if it's a mother's work it is done only for the mother without expecting anything in return the niskama karma we said so when we do start doing mother's work we we live for the mother but until that that time we have to do some niskama karma niskama karma means without wanting anything in return we have to do what is that then so we know there are study circles there are same we are arranging seminars and we are going and uh, even spreading mothers and children those messages do we have any uh, you know self interest in that no but this for mothers work that this work should go on mother said mother asked uh, will you help her? as you said world is preparing for a big change will you help without help can't she do anything she is the uh, the divine mother and she she can do it but she is giving us the scope the opportunity to do for her to uh, you know to uh, we're having that opportunity to work for that cause that aim which for which she has come and for which she is working so therefore that we can arrange circles and we can work you know there are school mothers integral schools and centers and ashram we can go there and spend some time some niskam karma means we can spend some time without expecting anything in return and in a bold concentrated way we can give some work for the center or for anything which is meant only for the mother in our house when we are doing something subconscious also we have that we are doing for myself we are doing for our family and all these things but there the thing will be the work will be offered only to the mother and i think if any one can suggest any more anything else or give their opinion about it
working for the mother is uh, very simply stated mother's work if it is simply stated means acting for the divine and living for the divine all the time at every moment yes but can we do that that's why mother and sri aurobindo has also said to give spare spare some time every day for some niskama karma that will make us a practice and gradually will develop that thing as, as you said as you said yes, sir asavan sir something you wanted to say ah yes sir thank you madam for very enlightening uh, practical guiding talk it appears to me uh, about the mother's work mother's work can be done only by the mother it, that is at the universal or cosmic level and uh, whatever you <laughs> can never imagine what we can do is only for the mother we can work for the mother that's what uh, appears to me correct it's a very good answer <laughs> thank you sir somebody hmm. else anything where 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 anybody else uh thank you thank you madam thank you uh, this is really a privilege for me uh, yeah thank you very much and in fact uh, the last question you have asked that what do you mean by the mother's work of course as ashwan sir has rightly put it in the strictest sense of the term the mother's work no human can do it is true it we can't do her work she is the divine and we can't substitute her work but what we can do is we can work for the mother she or bindo has uh, stated three stages when you begin to involve yourself in the in serving the mother the first stage first stage is that of a worker that means you are you are uh, you are conscious that you are working the you have the consciousness that you are doing the work you don't have that full consciousness that it is a mother who is doing the work through you you are not reached a stage but you are conscious that you are doing the work but yet you should have it in the in mind that you are doing the work for her that means without any as you said nishkama karma without any self interest without any expectation only for the uh, joy of serving her you should work that's the first stage he states he says second stage is that you become the more and more you lose your self interest and and in serving the mother then you will graduate yourself to the level of a, an instrument first stage is the worker second stage you become an instrument that her forces started working through you that's a second stage then the third stage is there because yet even in the second stage also you are conscious that the divine force is using you as an instrument the third stage is ultimate stage where you become one with the divine power that is acting that is you become the part and parcel of her consciousness part and parcel of her power part and parcel of her ananda you become one with the divine mother that's a ultimate 
course, it's very difficult to reach a stage, even in the first stage itself, without any, without having any egoistic claim on our works, it's very difficult. Even if we do that, that would be a big achievement. Supposing we are all working for the mother, we we all engage ourselves in some activities related to our centers. There, one should we do, we of course, we conduct study circles, we conduct satsangs. We should ask why we are doing that, whether we do we have any self-interest, whether we feel happy when somebody praises us, whether it flatters our ego. All the, when all these things are there, that means we are not working for the mother, we are working for our ego. So it's a, it's a very good question. One should be very careful uh, about all these things. As you say, mother is telling that uh, two things will act as a real safeguard for you in the in your journey. One is sincerity. That is, you should be very sincere. In the sincere means sincere. You don't have any none none of your parts stake any claim on your work. You are doing strictly only for the sake of the mother. You're for the for, for serving the mother. That's your that's uh, so that's the first thing. Second thing is humility. You should be always conscious that whatever you do, you can't do it yourself without the grace of the divine. That's what she says. Sincerity and humility will be will be will be uh, will act as a safeguard for you in your journey. She says. So uh, since you have raised this question, all these uh, attendant uh, uh, factors uh, came to my mind. I would like to share in this forum. Of course, you are uh, you are going a very beautiful. Uh, uh, um, speech, especially we, uh, it's a least in a, we care at least about and we are, because in our life we can't do away with material things. They, uh, whatever we do, uh, we are dealing with the material things, but we take them for granted. On the other hand, we forget that we are they are, they are very conscious, and we forget that they are very conscious. We take them for granted, and we often misuse them. And uh, you have given a very nice uh, quotation from Sri Aurobindo that uh, when we don't handle the material things properly, uh, we are denying them uh, the consciousness uh, which they, which we, we, which they are, uh, they are likely to get. You see, when we we don't handle the material things properly. We are denying them their uh, the divine consciousness. We are we are preventing the matter from becoming the divine. That's what uh, you you quoted. And of course, uh, your another instant you quoted how she trained Huta's hands, and uh, before she could become a good painter, and uh, how her body works. And mother say mother has stated that uh, in the case of she has seen a she has seen a pia pianist. Uh, whose hands have consciousness um, independent of her body. That is the same thing true with, uh, with the mother also. When the mother plays her hands, the consciousness simply flows through her hands. All these things are very interesting things. But uh, this is whatever you spoke, each and every word, uh, we can put it to best use in our day-to-day -day life. I thank you very much uh, for uh, participating in our uh, satsang. I wish more and more you should participate in our satsang uh, so that we, all of us can be benefited by your talks. Thank you very much. I think Tarini, uh, some hand is raising. Anything uh, Tarini would like to share? OK. If nothing is there, then uh, can we close the session? OK, we'll close the session with the mother's music. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Sujata, madam. Every time uh, you speak, for the discussion we had. yeah. It's every it. time you speak, it's always a source of inspiration for us. Thank you very much, Tarini, sir. Uh, anything you would like to share, Tarini? Your mic is mute. Tarini, sir, your mic is muted. We are we we can't hear you.
Okay, uh, we can close the session. Thank you very much.